Welcome to the Narrowboat that James built. Welcome to Project 58. Thanks for watching. This boat is here at PNS Marine in Watford getting some vital works done. The Vetus Marine diesel engine needs to be taken out the boat and the engine bay all stripped. And inside the boat, well, it needs to be cleared out entirely, stripped back and basically started again. Apart from the mammoth task that lies ahead of me inside the boat, outside is also quite a big one. The engine bay needs to be sorted out and the engine taken out and reconditioned. This Vetus 42 has been sitting underwater in battery acid and water for quite some time. Luckily, she turns. So with the engine out of the boat, I need to seriously crack on with the inside and the engine bay. So please join me as I transform this narrowboat into a lovely, comfortable home. Right, what I've worked out I'm going to do is, oh there's a massive screw hanging out there, is uh, take off this bit here, cut away a little bit there with the multi-tool and then see if I can take this board out here because there's a natural cut in that one. That's the end of the board. So then I can see how kind of far it's spread. I don't really want to cut all this out even though I'll probably end up having to. Feels better there. There feels a bit damp, and there is just wet. But it's not horrific. And obviously, I'm pretty sure now this has been caused by the fact that directly above it has been a hole in the roof for the last few years, which hasn't been sealed. So that's, you know, now I've had a few bits to think about it. I think that's the most logical explanation as opposed to any pipe failing or anything like that lands there that's the worst part of it and it's slowly just kind of through osmosis this area here just gets a bit weak but i reckon it's okay but really i think what i have to do to be you know, kind of proper is cut out all of this assuming it's a normal board find out where the um where the joists are cut back to there remove it all and replace it and then obviously treat it and stuff I don't think I'm going to have to take more out where's the seam on that one? Oh bloody hell it's miles away yeah I don't want to have to take up all the floor Although that bit there just goes to that cut out bit of dinette, that might be quite straightforward to do. I think I'm gonna have to take the floor out, aren't I? That's the only way of doing this. Right, floor's coming out. Right, floor's been cleared. I'm gonna see if I can get those two up. So that one and that one, I've put something underneath it to kind of force it up in the middle. Now I'm gonna try to pull it up from that side there. See if I can just get them two up without taking it all out for the moment. Hmm. Oh. 
Right. Here we go. Here we go. Together as much as I can. Right, I've taken up all the floorboards from basically the whole of it. You'll see there I've numbered them all, and that corresponds to my little map I've made. So if I choose to put them back, I can put them back in the right order. I've only taken up to here so far because obviously that's where the hole is. There it is, Mr. Holt. And there's those engineering bricks. All nicely, tightly fitted in. Um, so I'm pretty sure after kind of initial inspection that it is just this one here that needs to go. This all looks all right. I'm just gonna take this stuff up now. bit jigsaw like how they put it together but uh, it does mean that I'm only able well I only need to really take out that far board there which is a bit of a relief so uh, yeah I think it's just been screwed down so I should be able to get that out otherwise I'll cut it out but I'd need to do something anyway because there was I don't know if that was an old hearth or whatever, but um, there was certainly that cupboard there. So that's made an imprint in the floor. And then obviously I can work out the step arrangement from here. Right, this is uh, cleared as much as I can. All the screws uh, holding this down are pretty knackered. So it kind of rusted away. So uh, I'm gonna have to probably cut this out. So I've taken most of the trim off that I can. So yeah, I'm gonna cut this out, but this board here and this board here and pretty much everything else from what I can see are pretty sound. There's an inspection hole here. And obviously you can see it's kind of discolored a bit there, but that's the burn marks from when the hole saw went through. This is all fine. So um, not too much of a problem. And it was definitely because of that. See, that's the collar, but it's not installed. So if I, and it never has been. So I can, I can just lift that out. And there's a hole there. In fairness, there's a couple of holes there in that steel. This whole bit's not very good, to be honest. There's a lot of rust in there. Look at all of that on the actual steel. So, not too sure really what the plan is going to be with that stove's going to be on that side so that's going to have to be filled in which is a bit annoying because it's a bit ugly doing that although I guess I could make it into a mushroom vent couldn't I I could chuck a mushroom vent in there actually that's not a bad idea but talking about metal work you can't really see it now, but all of my skin things have been ground off. Having some pits welded up. Obviously they've got to be ground back properly first. Uh, Ralph has welded those up. So it's patchwork. It's a bit like what's happened to Slow Patrol. Um, it would have been nicer to have filled in the holes and ground it back flush, but obviously that's all about budget and time, both of which we don't really have. But yeah, quite a lot of the pits have been done. But the water line is in bad shape. So I'm gonna have to grind all this back. The owner did it. He ground the sides back. So I think it must've been quite a lot worse than this, but this is just where it's been sitting in the marina before my guy had it. 
So while Bill is grinding back the side of the boat still, sorting out those skin fittings, I've got to turn my attention to this. So I've vacuumed it out for the last time. I've got to get some nappies and kind of clean all that rubbish out, dry it off fully. Now I can get right down here. And then the horrible task is basically going to be scraping all of this back and getting rid of all the rubbish. And getting rid of the old Mikuni diesel water heater. I'm pretty sure that doesn't work because it's been decommissioned. Those were the feeds going to the calorifier. But yeah, it hasn't been in action for ages. That was unplugged. There's no calorifier on board. So that thing is uh, a little bit defunct. That's part of it. Yeah, so um, I'm going to take that off that backboard there. I might leave the backboard on depending on what the quality it is because that might be useful to attach something else there. But um, there's the exhaust for the Makuni. Obviously that's the exhaust for the boat. That's the skin fitting for the um, bilge pump. So I'm gonna keep that one obviously because that's bilge pump. That one could be used as a diesel heater exhaust. So I'll keep that one. This one obviously I'll keep. That is just a vent, so I can't do anything about that. But that's it in terms of skin fittings inside the engine bay. Uh, obviously those are just bulkhead fittings. There's another vent there. And then going a bit further around. Unlike Slow Patrol, which has a standalone diesel tank welded onto the swim, this is the swim there. This one here, the diesel tank is integral to the boat, so it's, it occupies that last part of the boat there. Right, this is going to be a horrible day. Right, let's get cracking. Right, so I've scraped out all the big, flaky, horrible bits of rust. That's all pretty dry, okay? This stuff here is all quite wet. And one of the great advantages of having children, certainly youngsters, is that I have an abundance of nappies and these are really good for soaking up and just leave it there for a while. These need to air dry before I can really start kind of putting some grit down and really kind of drying this out with, and cleaning it up with wild wheels and stuff like that. That's fine on that kind of nice dry surface, but here where it's all wet, it's not suitable at all. So pack it full of nappies and just kind of let it sit there for a while and let the nappy do its thing. Scoop it up nicely. Time for some lunch. And I am in for a right treat. Mike Miller, you are a star. You bought me 10 coffees on buying me a coffee thing. So I've used some of it for lunch. I don't often treat myself to a lunch, but today doing a workout there, I need it. So Mike, you legend. I've got myself my favorite. Ham, cheese, cucumber, cress, mustard and mayo. And a packet of crisps. Mike. Legend. Cheers. All right, that's lunch dispatched with. Now I've got to go back to this horrible lot. If I'm honest, it's not going anywhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was really dreading it. But like a lot of this boat, it's being very, very kind to me. A lot of that came up quite easily. Um, Obviously I'll wire wheel it down and get it all decent, but Nappy's have had some time now to dry all this out. 
Oh, that's helpful. I was going to just wet it again. Oh, no, I haven't. So that's dried that out a bit now. Now it can air dry. Ouch. Time now to tackle this side, which I fear is going to be a little bit more uh, complicated. I'm going about attaching this Makuni diesel heater. So I've undone some of those hoses. And I think those are the ones which went to the calorifier. Might return. So I'm expecting there might be a bit of water in some of these hoses. But um, there's also a diesel line here going from there and then running up to the tank there. And there's a tap on it. So. I'm not sure it was like that. So I'm presuming if it's been decommissioned, it's been turned off. It looks like that's off, that'd be on. So I'm hoping that it's not gonna have, because I think the tank is full. So, um, certainly sounds it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna then therefore detach it there and then it's just a matter of a few screws and taking this thing off. Then I've got to take the exhaust off next. Well, like everything else on this boat, this Makuni diesel heater looks like it's in pretty good nick. Hardly used, I'd say. That's the exhaust I've taken off. Right, I am making some progress in taking this Makuni heater off the wall. Everything's been disconnected. To be honest, without the engine in here, it's a fine space to work. I didn't have, if I had the engine in there, I don't know how I'd read it. Be able to see this at all. Oh, there we go. That's got it. There we go. I mean, it, it does look in good nick, to be honest. So, uh, but it's quite a dated bit of kit um, so I'm going to keep this safe somewhere there's a few extra parts for it there's the exhaust and some other bits so I'm going to keep this safe if anybody wants this for parts or spares then get in touch with me and uh, come and pick it up from Watford okay now God, it is dangerous sitting down here. Cool. That just got right up there. Right. Okay. That looks okay. Got it nice and secure. I'll paint that up. Leave that in. That ply. Well, that's a bit knackered. Probably take that out. Because that'd be easy to replace anyway. I'll leave that on. This one here can come out because that steel's got to be treated properly. Okay. And then... Those two go into the fitting into the cupboard on that side there. So I'll disconnect the hoses and then I'll take them out from the cupboard side and then basically that is all done. These pipes here which go to the skin tanks. So you've got return and flow on both of those. Uh, somehow I'm gonna have to try to clean that up and see if I can take that off. Hmm. I think that the tanks are empty. I've drained them as much as I can with a wet vac. So if they are full, or if there is anything in it, it's only up to there. But I think the rest of this should be fairly easy to clean up. It's just kind of surface rust, but from that, which is a little bit more than surface rust. I've 
I've de-rusted now the starboard swim and the port swim. Taken quite a lot off this, although like most of the bits of this boat, I have lucked out because this stuff is okay. Yeah, there's a bit of, it's kind of superficial rust in there. It's a bit, you know, kind of a bit bigger there, but it's okay. I've taken quite a bit out, but this thing is fine. Um, engine bay, I really like it. It's got some nice features. Battery box kind of encasements there and some anchoring points all along it. So that's quite a nice, nice touch. It's got all these braces everywhere as well for where you can kind of securely mount cables and diesel lines and things too. So it's got some really nice features in this engine bay. Support there for the exhaust. So quite spacious. Uh, so I'm gonna let this air dry overnight. I've got to just finish up the floor here with some more nappies and then scrape down these sides here, go about it tomorrow with some wire brushes and some steel wheels and things like that and kind of spruce it up a bit. Then I will put some rust treatment down, some red oxide and then some build paint. And I think I'm gonna go for something quite light colored. That's the, usually the plan, because then if anything drops on the floor, you can see it easily. And Ralph seriously recommends some kind of garage floor paint, which I've seen loads of people use. So I think I might go for that because Craftmaster build paint is rather pricey and I need quite a lot of it and I want it nice and light. So yeah, that's gonna be my plan. So I'll tackle more of this tomorrow, but quite decent progress today. Well, that's me done for today. I am absolutely knackered, but that was a decent day in the engine bay. Uh, it's really not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So tomorrow I'll keep tackling that. I've also got to do the hole in the floor tomorrow and take up some of that stuff and unearth the uh, disasters at the front of the boat. But uh, I'll more on that tomorrow. I'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching. Mike, thanks again for lunch. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.